Well, here we are, my friends, 14 years after the tragic events of September 11, 2001, that were used to transform not just the United States, but many other nations across the world into Orwellian police states that, as you notice, as Benjamin Franklin's warning comes true, giving up security for supposedly safety or giving up liberty for so-called security and safety leads to absolute total enslavement. I just had a Freudian slip there. I was trying to quote him from memory, teleprompter free, that those that give up liberty for security will receive and deserve neither. And so I was saying those that give up security for safety are idiots because I see liberty as security. So you don't get safety out of giving up your security. The two things are interchangeable. So my mind just change the word in midstream because I'm so dedicated to neurotically telling the truth. It goes without saying, if you give up freedom, if you give up your basic rights, if you let a outside group, a centralized secretive group, control your resources and your life, you will wake up very, very soon being enslaved. That's the history of the world. It's absolute common sense. And as the checks and balances go out the window, it becomes more transparent than ever. We have quite a lineup today here on the broadcast. We have the barber. He contacted us. He's going on Fox News today. He said he wanted to come on here first. He saw us talk about it. Barbershop fined $750 for refusing to cut a woman's hair. It advertises as a men's barbershop. And a woman came in and said, you're going to cut my hair. And they said, we don't have the equipment to cut your hair the way you want it done. Go to a women's haircutting place. And Pittsburgh fined them. And you just say, yeah, okay, it's ridiculous, but why are you obsessing over this story? Because this is the future. They're not going to find any women's haircutting places for not cutting men's hair. They're going to persecute and harass any bastions of male identity or male behavior. It is a culture war. The feminists are going to Talk about men being sexual objects, but if a man does it, you're going to get arrested. That's already happening in some areas of Europe. This story was out yesterday. Feminists claim it's sexist to compliment women. Feminazi publicly shames man for complimenting her. Another lawyer came by her LinkedIn. This is in the Telegraph today. We reported on it a few days ago and said to her, you've got a stunning photo, best profile photo I've seen. She then publicly shamed him and was praised by feminist groups for standing up to the oppression. Well, it turns out, uh, London Telegraph, lawyer who accused barrister of sexism has described men online as hot stuff and trolled around telling them they're hot. See, it's all about power to these people who aren't really that smart or aren't really that powerful to play the political correct game of sexism or the race card as a get out of jail free card. And when you bow to them, you only empower their bizarre behavior. But that's coming up in the second hour. It is obviously the 14th anniversary of 9-11. We're going to be breaking down a lot of key new developments on that front. Cops on high alert for Black Lives Matter violence targeting 9-11 events. Um, NATO says they're caught by surprise by Russian move into Syria. We'll also get into two out of three Hispanics opposed immigration increase in a new Gallup poll. And a lot more today. Stay with us. Every broadcast is extremely important. But today's is going to be particularly important. Joseph Farah is going to be joining us, the founder of World Net Daily, the target of the Clintons for destruction uh, via the White House papers that have been released by their Library Foundation, he's got a lot of new intel for us and what he sees in his crystal ball. Joseph Farah will be joining us. 
in the middle of the broadcast. Pastor Chuck Baldwin, of outspoken, uh, eloquent, true Christian leader, will be looking at the situations with Christians being arrested for not issuing marriage licensure and Romans 13 that's being used to suppress Christians, not just here but across the world. Uh, the radical Islamic invasion being supported by traitorous Western governments and more. And then the owner of the barber shop, Johnny Interval, there in Pittsburgh, that is a men's barber shop. And a woman showed up and wanted her hair done the way women have it done. And they said, lady, we don't have the equipment. Well, she got to have her little victory and ran off and got them fined for it. So next fraternal orders like the Masons, will they have to accept women? Next, can I go to a black fraternal club and demand that I be made a Prince Hall Mason? Or uh, we had a guest in here a few days ago who made the point, can I, if I have a Dodge, can I go into a Toyota or a Mercedes Benz or BMW or Saab or Ferrari or Lamborghini or Nissan dealership and say, hey, I've got a Dodge car. I want you to work on it. They go, do you see the sign, sir? There's a Dodge down the street. We work on Toyotas here, or we work on German imports here. Oh, why are you discriminating against me? I got a Dodge. Well, sir, we can't afford all the equipment for all the cars, and we have the mechanics for German cars. I mean, it has nothing to do with oppressing women, and they know that, and it's, the, it's like men used to go join the military to earn their bones, so daddy, who was a veteran, would respect them. I mean, that's why most men end up joining the military, because daddy was in the military, and his daddy was in the military. Or most guys become cops, is because grandpa was a cop. And every male purview, every male reservation, every male place has to be overrun and taken over in some bizarre Ford Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation-directed paramilitary operation of weird, power-tripping women who are now discovering what it's like to have six foot four, 350 pound, in one case, man in their dressing rooms at their gyms and at their clubs, and they're freaking out. But see, they're trumped by a transgender. Here's one, San Francisco, L.A. Now, L.A. Times, San Francisco jails to house transgender inmates based on gender preferences. Well, the women don't have to worry too much about a bunch of men who say they're women wanting to be over at the women's prison or the women's jail. Because let me tell you, the uh, transgenders are going to want to be with the men <laughs> in most cases. But can you imagine? I mean, I've seen the documentaries on PBS. First time I ever saw when I was a kid... My parents let me watch PBS and not a lot more. They called television brain rot. And I saw some documentary about death row. And it showed men who were allowed to be given hormones to be women. That's where they did the social engineering test in the 80s was on the prisons. And it showed like on TV documentary men with big breasts fondling each other. And I was like to my dad who was out of the room. I go, dad, what is this? And he goes, yeah, that goes on in the prisons where men adopt the fact that they're a woman to basically have a place in the prison and they get passed around and most of them get HIV. And he goes, and they also give their blood to get the drug money. And the prisons sell them the drugs. I kind of rolled my eyes. You know, it was my dad that told me, don't, don't be an organ donor. They'll kill you in the hospitals and sell your organs. And I said, Dad, that's crazy. And he goes, well, okay, well, I've rewired jaws in hospitals where they say don't sign the organ donor card to the other doctors. He was an oral surgeon. And then years later, 60 Minutes, Dallas, Texas, Chicago, Illinois, killing people in the hospitals for their organs. My dad said, I'm not going to repeat it all to you. He just, it's like the movie Coma. And I said, what's the movie Coma? And he goes, go to the video store with your mother and rent it if you want to know. Turns out how right my dad, I guess he was the original conspiracy theorist in the family. Because he was right. But that's all this is. So you're a woman in prison and a 250 pound guy comes in. And he's a lady. <laughs> and, and you see, if they can get away with this, they can do anything. In fact, they just pulled up an article, mass murder 
was given the right to taxpayer-funded sex change in prison. And man, death row is a party. It is a party, and they work the system. So we've got the owner of the barbershop coming on. And then we've got Joseph Farrah, and we've got Pastor Chuck Baldwin today. It is the 14th anniversary of 9-11-2001. And before I get to the latest on 9-11, I think Leanne McAdoo did a superlative job with the rest of the host last night on the Nightly News going back over some of the more bombshell interviews we've done, including a high-level, recently retired senior firefighter who talked about the bombs in the buildings and what really happened that day. But I just want to look to what's currently happening and what's going to happen and how 14 years later, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Saudi Arabian proxy armies are bigger and badder by a scale of... I don't want to exaggerate. They admit there's about 250,000 operatives they know they have. Al-Qaeda had a couple thousand before. So a couple hundred thousand versus a couple thousand. I mean, it's just exponentially bigger. Do the math yourself. We're going to tie that in now with the former deputy director recently uh, stepped down of the Central Intelligence Agency saying that they were basically ordered to make up false intelligence to cover up Al-Qaeda and ISIS's spread. That's on Infowars.com. And it dovetails with former DIA director, U.S. made willful decision to support ISIS in Syria. So the good news is our own government, our own CIA and Defense Department, I mean, who do you think I've had on blowing the whistle on 9-11? CIA people, FBI, others. The deputy director of the FBI was killed on 9-11, John O'Neill. He gave a speech two weeks before in England. The Telegraph covered it saying our government basically runs Islamic extremists. They're protecting them. They're going to allow them to attack to take our liberties. He was then called in the day of 9-11 and blown up in the building. Can't make this up. Can't ever make up reality compared to fiction. Reality is so much wilder, it always is. Truth is stranger than fiction. So we're going to be getting into all of that today. But here's the really big news, and this is what I experienced growing up in Dallas, Texas, living in Austin, Texas, spending a lot of summers, at least a month each summer for a lot of years with my cousins down in San Antonio so my parents could have a break, that I'd say from the polls I've seen, what I've experienced, about 65, 70% of Hispanic Americans are really upset about illegals because they know they work the system and work jobs, but then also get welfare driving down wages. And the Hispanic Americans, who just want to be called Americans, are generally pretty prideful folks, don't have abortions, don't have as many divorces, don't call the police as often, uh, own guns, and work as hard as they can to, to play by the rules. And, and are military veterans, and they really get upset by the illegals because the illegals, not all of them, but a portion of them, are very tribal. I mean, Mexi Mexican towns have fights for the next town all the time. This is what humans do, and they basically fight with each other. And they understand what's happening. So when you hear this hoax that 2 plus 2 equals 5 or you can keep your doctor under Obamacare or it's free or you didn't build your business or raising the debt limit doesn't raise the debt limit, it is a giant hoax. But when you hear the hoax that Republicans are going to lose the election because they want to have a little bit of a border and not let people have their babies for free. Well, I mean, now the majority is Chinese women having their babies for free. Upwards of 10000 a week pouring in. It's just not fair. And we're going bankrupt. And people are playing by the rules, paying all these taxes, and can't make ends meet. And they're watching Eastern Europeans, Africans, Chinese, Mexicans, Guatemalans, Nicaraguans, Brazilians, you name it, getting everything free. And they're mad. What sane person wouldn't be? And here's a Gallup poll, one of the most scientific out there, 
Two out of three has